In an era marked by resource scarcity, one project looms ominously, poised to ignite the first water warfare of the 21st century. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, the largest hydroelectric power plant in Africa, is a colossal engineering feat that promises to generate 6,000 megawatts of electricity and control 74 billion cubic meters of water. Located on the Blue Nile, this dam is not merely about power, it's about control. Ethiopia aims to transform its energy sector and boost its economy. But the project has raised alarm in neighboring countries like Egypt and Sudan, who rely heavily on the Nile for their water supply. As tensions rise, questions remain. Will this engineering marvel bring prosperity to Ethiopia and beyond, or is it a ticking time bomb for regional conflict? In the arid regions of East Africa, where access to energy and water is vital, Ethiopia found itself facing a growing challenge. Despite the country's vast rivers and hydropower potential, millions of its people remained without electricity. The increasing power demand, fueled by rapid population growth and industrial development, highlighted a critical issue. Ethiopia's reliance on expensive and unsustainable energy sources couldn't keep up with the needs of its people. The Blue Nile, one of the most powerful rivers in the world, flowed through Ethiopia, but the nation had yet to fully harness its potential. As the need for energy reached a tipping point, the country sought a transformative solution. Decades earlier, plans to tap into the Blue Nile's immense energy potential were discussed, but political instability and economic challenges delayed any meaningful progress. It wasn't until the early 21st century that Ethiopia began to seriously consider using the river for large-scale hydropower generation. After extensive research and technical studies, the government made a bold decision. In 2011, construction of a massive hydroelectric dam began, marking the start of one of the most ambitious projects in African history. Situated on the Blue Nile, the dam's strategic location, about 40 kilometers from the Sudanese border, was selected to maximize the river's flow for electricity generation. This project was not merely about fulfilling Ethiopia's own energy needs, it represented the nation's aspiration to establish itself as a regional power hub. The dam, with the capacity to generate thousands of megawatts, would provide enough electricity to power millions of homes and industries, not only in Ethiopia, but also in neighboring countries. The construction of the dam also aimed to regulate the flow of the Blue Nile, which would reduce seasonal flooding and improve water management across the region. But what challenges did Ethiopia face during the construction of this monumental project, and how has the journey unfolded? In just a minute, we'll dive into the mind-boggling engineering techniques used to build this dam, including how they redirected one of the most powerful rivers in the world. You won't want to miss this. But first, how would you like to watch our videos ad-free for just $2 a month? Or get access to exclusive content for $10 a month? For $17, you can pitch topics and get your name in the credits. Join our premium community at www.patreon.com slash the impossible build. And if you're just here for something free, grab our U.S. military billion dollar blunders video at theimpossiblebuild.org slash billion dollar blunders. Both links are in the description below. Standing at an impressive 155 meters in height and stretching 1,780 meters across, the main dam is composed of roller compacted concrete. This material was chosen for its rapid setting and strength, critical for a project of this scale. The RCC technique is highly efficient for large-scale dams, allowing for the continuous placement of concrete, which speeds up construction and ensures the structure's stability. The dam's volume is enormous, with more than 10 million cubic meters of concrete used to form the massive structure, ensuring that it can hold the immense pressure of the reservoir behind it. 
In addition to the main dam, the project features a rock-filled saddle dam that stretches over 4.9 kilometers in length and reaches a height of 50 meters. The saddle dam plays a crucial role in supporting the reservoir, acting as a secondary containment structure to manage the vast amount of water stored in the GERD. Constructing the saddle dam required precision and care, particularly in terms of managing water flow and sediment control, which are vital to maintaining the integrity of both the main and saddle dams over time. At full capacity, the dam's reservoir will cover an area of 1,874 square kilometers, holding up to 74 billion cubic meters of water. The sheer size of this reservoir posed significant challenges during the construction process, particularly regarding the diversion of the Blue Nile. The river had to be temporarily diverted to allow construction of the dam's foundation, a complex and delicate operation that required precise coordination and planning. This was achieved through the creation of four large box culverts, each capable of discharging up to 14,700 cubic meters of water per second, ensuring that the river's natural flow could be maintained while construction progressed. Three spillways have been integrated into the dam's design to manage the flow of water and prevent overflow during periods of heavy rainfall. The main spillway is gated, with six radial gates that can each release 2,450 cubic meters of water per second. This allows for precise control over the water levels in the reservoir and ensures that the dam can handle even the heaviest flood events. An auxiliary spillway is also included, designed to discharge water when the reservoir reaches full supply level. One of the most complex aspects of the GERD's construction is its power generation capacity. The dam houses two powerhouses, one on each side of the river, equipped with a total of 13 Francis turbines. These turbines, which are designed to operate under high water pressure, have a combined generating capacity of 5,150 megawatts. The powerhouse on the right bank contains 10 turbines, each rated at 375 megawatts, while the left bank powerhouse contains 6 turbines. The electricity generated will be transmitted via overhead lines connected to a 500 kilovolt switchyard downstream of the dam, which will distribute the power throughout Ethiopia and potentially to neighboring countries. The installation of the turbines was a monumental task, requiring extensive civil engineering and electromechanical work. Each turbine is fed by an 8-meter diameter penstock, which channels water from the reservoir down to the turbines. The sheer size of the penstocks and the pressure of the water flowing through them required careful planning and the use of high-quality materials to ensure the long-term functionality and safety of the system. Each turbine has been strategically placed to maximize the use of water flow, ensuring optimal efficiency in power generation. The dam's ability to regulate water flow is also a key aspect of its design, aimed not only at generating electricity, but also at managing water resources in the region. By controlling the flow of the Blue Nile, the GERD is expected to mitigate flooding downstream, particularly in Sudan, which has historically suffered from seasonal flooding during the rainy season. The dam will also reduce sedimentation in downstream reservoirs, which has long been a problem in Sudanese and Egyptian water management. This sediment control is achieved through the design of the reservoir and the spillways, which are engineered to minimize the buildup of silt, ensuring the dam's long-term functionality. Despite its innovative design and advanced construction techniques, the GERD faced significant challenges throughout its development. A major hurdle was the complex geological conditions at the site, necessitating deeper excavation and additional concrete for stability, which increased both time and cost. Additionally, the remote location in the Benashengul Gamuz region posed logistical difficulties. To address this, a rock-crushing plant was established on site, and a small airstrip was constructed for efficient transport of materials and personnel. These solutions were crucial in maintaining the project's progress despite the inherent challenges of building such a massive structure in a secluded area. 
The GERD also faced environmental challenges, particularly in managing the large volume of water held in the reservoir. The risk of evaporation is a constant concern in such a large reservoir, as water loss can affect both power generation and water availability downstream. However, the dam design considers this, with the reservoir's depth and the surrounding climate helping to minimize evaporation rates compared to other large dams in the region, such as Egypt's Aswan High Dam. One of the most significant challenges facing the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, is the intense conflict between Ethiopia and Egypt. Egypt views the dam as directly threatening its water security, as the Nile provides nearly 90% of the country's water supply. Tensions have escalated over concerns that the dam could reduce the flow of the Nile, impacting millions of Egyptian farmers and Egypt's overall water supply. Diplomatic efforts have struggled to resolve the issue, with Egypt even threatening military action, making this a complex geopolitical challenge. The final stages of the dam's construction are now focused on completing the remaining turbines and finalizing the dam's electromechanical components. Once fully operational, the GERD, built for $5 billion, will not only be Africa's largest hydroelectric power plant, but also one of the most significant infrastructure projects in the world. If you enjoyed this journey, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated.